Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Cochin County Water Commissioner's regular meeting for Tuesday, December 28th, 2021. I would you help me open this meeting with Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. The first item is to consider approving the proposed agenda with additions and or deletions. We have one addition. There will be no uh, resolution accepting a airport rescue grant, which is a, uh, just towards the latter part of the year. Great, great deal. Good deal. Timing is everything, other. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, with that addition, I will accept a motion to approve the agenda. Move. Thank you, Commissioner Scoy. Second, Mr. Thank you, Commissioner Hadley. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. The next step is to approve the minutes from the December 14, 2021 regular meeting. I'll move, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Swain. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing now, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item is a COVID-19 update. And Kathy, hi Kathy, good morning. Good morning. As of now for Cochiching County, we are at 1,969 cases with 29 deaths. And as of last Thursday, there's still 100 of those cumulative cases needing isolation. 56.2% uh, of our population have at least one dose. The percentage of people over 65 that are vaccinated is much higher at around 80 some percent. Uh, the levels of people getting vaccines has risen in the last three months with November being the highest. Over the summer, it really dropped down, but it's, <clears throat> it seems to be coming back up now with people, I'm sure being concerned about what's happening with winter and school starting and whatnot. Um, we do have uh, boost clinics every Thursday in the month of January here at Public Health. Again, those boosters are available to anyone over 18. Um, six months out from your Pfizer or Moderna shot or two months out for your Janssen shot. The, um, <clears throat> see. On 12-22, the FDA authorized the first drug to take at home at the sign of first symptoms and also for high risk age 12 and older. It significantly reduces hospitalization in death in that population when taken at home while you're isolating. Across the U.S., four times as many children are being hospitalized and none of them have been vaccinated. The CDC um, yesterday, I believe it was, put out new recommendations for asymptomatic people that have COVID. They're asking those folks to isolate five days and wear a mask for five additional days, unless of course they develop system symptoms, which then they should um, isolate for the 10 days at home. They've uh, data has shown that usually someone will exhibit symptoms within those first five days and rarely after that, after exposure, um, five days previously, and that there's such a concern with people getting, especially healthcare folks, getting back to work, um, that this is why this is why they changed it. So, but the science does support it that there these people are at a lower risk of transmitting to others. Is there any questions? When's this going to end, Kathy? 
Well, I don't know that it's ever going to end. And the concern, one of the really big concerns right now is if we get a big outbreak of flu um, along with the COVID, it's going to really wreak even more ha havoc with the hospitals and the healthcare system. So people should get their flu shots and they should get their COVID vaccines. Yes. Kathy, uh, uh, the medication that you were talking about, uh, if for those that have COVID and uh, to help ease the pain per se, um, that's only by Pfizer right now, right? Right. It's called Pax Paxlovid. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Kathy? Thank you, Kathy, for the update. Thank you. Happy New Year. I'll be back later. Good. The next item is financial business. Mr. Chair, I will move to pay the uh, courthouse claims, the highway claims, and the uh, health and human service claims. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. A through C. Second, Mr. Thank you, Commissioner Pavlik. Any discussion on the claims? Okay, now I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. The next item is to approve uh, void of warrant. I will move on the uh, void of warrant, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Second. Thank you, Mr. Stoy. Any discussion on the void? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Aye. Next is to designate authority to the administration assistant to approve the 2021 year end claim payments. This is to pay the bill at the end of the year, Jen, is that right? That's correct. So the last day of the year will run a, a batch of claims. Um, Betsy will approve those and then they'll be ratified January for, Jan, at the first meeting in January. Thank you. I'll move on that, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. All set. Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Our next item is to offer is commitment of funds. That. Yes, I will. So we have uh, three, uh, four, actually four classifications of funds. We have unspendable funds. Those are um, uh, fund balances associated with inventory. So, you know, obviously we have uh, some inventory uh, primarily in the highway department. We have restricted funds, amounts that can only be spent for a specific purpose. And that's um, stipulated by grants and contracts. We have committed funds. And this is what I'm asking you to do today, um, is commit uh, fund balances um, that can only be used by a specific purpose determined uh, by formal action of the county board. And then we have assigned funds. Assigned funds are intended for a specific purpose, but do not meet the criteria to be classified as restricted or committed. Um, all funds, with the exception of funds in the general revenue account, are assigned. Uh, the administration director, which is myself, I ha have been given the authority to assign fund balances. And uh, the assigned fund balances in the 2020 audit are going to um, be primarily just for contingency of 550000 So we set that aside. That can be changed at any time. Um, and unassigned are all spendable amounts not contained in other classifications. So what I'm asking you to do is to commit fund the following fund balances that are not governed by grants or contracts. 
and that is our sinking building fund and um, for the purpose of um, setting aside funds for unbudgeted facility improvements when there's uh, something an emergent uh, emergency that comes up those funds can be used um, carpool is for the purpose of setting aside funds for new vehicle purchases and then uh, veterans transportation for the purpose of providing veteran, trans veteran transportation to medical appointments and replacement of the veterans van. So currently right now we do have fund balances and all of those but carpool, carpool um, because we're not using cars as much, um, we're not generating as much um, revenues from the other departments that are using the carpool. So right now they do have a negative fund balance. I, um, um, in general revenue, so there's no restrict, there's no funds that will actually be committed at this time. But as the year goes on, that fund balance will grow. So um, I'm just asking you to um, basically approve the commitment of those funds. Thank you, Jim. I'll move, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Eady. Discussion? I understand the commitments. Thank you for explaining that. There is no discussion. I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Our next item is to adopt the 2022 county tax levy and county budget. And again, the administration director. And then to go through what we're looking at. Certainly. So the when we had the truth and taxation hearing, uh, there were a couple things that have changed since that meeting. Um, we're proposing uh, a five percent levy increase for a total levy of four million eight hundred and thirty thousand, and then the uh, breakdown of where those funds are allocated are listed um, on your R uh, RBA. Total revenues of 31,928,804 and expenditures of 30, I'm sorry, 31 million 923,804, expenditures of 33 million 285,378 uh, with anticipated reserve use of 1,356,574. The changes that have been made to the budget since um, the Truth and Taxation meeting is we um, added $10,000 to the VSO budget for Veterans Memorial Grant uh, for the matching funds that was approved. We added uh, 10977 to the extension budget uh, for a 0.75 position. We added $35,000 to the sheriff budgets to account for a squad um, that was not delivered in 2021. We, we didn't have enough squads budgeted in, in the sheriff's um, 2022 budget. When we looked through it again as a double check, we realized we were short one squad, even though there's a purchase of five squads that are anticipated for 2022 with Stone Garden purchasing one squad. Everything's backed up. We didn't get the two squads that we purchased in 21, even though we've got bid numbers on them and they're supposed to be in production. Um, but we needed to adjust the budget to reflect what was actually going to happen in 2022. And then um, I had a mistake in the lands and forestry budget um, with an increase of insurance costs. So those are the only changes um, that we have made since the last uh, truth and taxation meeting. Thank you. Um, I, I think I think I I might have misunderstood you, but uh, for the the tax levy or the not the tax levy, but the, uh, regarding the uh, the sales tax deal. Yes. Uh, I wasn't sure if you said five percent or 05 percent. The. The um, local option sales tax for transportation is one half of a one percent. Right. So it's 0.5 percent. Right. Yes. Right. I wasn't sure if I heard you say the, the 0.5. I I thought I just heard five percent. So okay. I just wanted to nope. make it clear. You were referring to the five percent increase in the 
levy? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, yeah. I was. We have a five percent or a proposed five percent right. levy increase. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Discussion? Anything? Uh, where are we at with the historical society? Um, I have funding in the KDA budget um, for uh, forty thousand dollars in KDA for twenty twenty two. If I'm correct, I see the city. Yeah, I was at that uh, city council and I uh, talked in behalf of them also when they uh, are going to, I think it was 30,000 or 40, I can't remember. One of the two they're putting in their share for the roof. But, but they want 20,000 back or something? There was, there was a, there was, I know well, was, it's, Jim, maybe Jim, there was something here. You know, I talked to Mike Williams and and Peggy uh, Vigarin over the weekend, and they're on the, that board, and they said the city did um, approve $40,000 with 20000 being a loan that potentially could be forgivable. So we're going to have to talk with um, the museum to see exactly what the city's providing and, and match something or, or decide what the county wants to do. But it, it, they did commit to, um, I think, the $40,000. i am not sure if it's all... Um, just an allocation, or if they're expecting a repayment, but we'll have to get clarification from them when we. It was with brought them. up by the uh, mayor. Uh, was it okay if they would do a half loan, and they said they could live with that? So I think they wouldn't have. I think they would have paid the whole thing, but I'm not sure why they said they they're okay with paying half of that. I guess it's better than nothing. It doesn't sound like they're. It, it sounds like it's going to be forgivable, but they didn't make that actually <laughs> commitment. Makes me nervous. I mean, they need to be an equal partner in that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I told them that could be an issue with us if you did that. Not reliable. Thank you. Any other discussion? The chair will accept a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion for. Accepting the uh, the 2022 county tax levy and county budget. At 4.830. Yeah, that's the one that's good. One second, Mr. Chair. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? There's nothing else. As a clarification, we're adopting it at the at the proposed five percent, which is four point eight three zero 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 for twenty twenty two. If there's no other discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to clarify that. Um, so when this you adopted the budget or the levy and the county budget and you're also um, stating in this board motion that the budget will remain open and subject to adjustments at any time to respond to funding cuts or other changes as a result of actions at the federal and state legislative level that's usually included in the board motion if you're all okay with that yeah put that on. I just want to clarify that okay are you, are you okay with that yeah, fine Mr. Ady, you have yes. a addition? Yes. We, we've that? always had it. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, next item. Next up is to adopt a resolution approving interim loans. It's basically a carryover from one year to the next on a few things. Mr. Chair, I have a correction on the fund balance for the Island View Sewer uh, Capital Improvement Project Fund. Okay. Uh, that balance is actually a little bit lower, one million eight hundred and thirteen thousand nine hundred and fifty-one dollars and fifty-two cents. Thank you. And, and then, and this just kind of carries those balances over uh, in twenty twenty-two. Yes, we can't have negative fund balances, so we have to do an inter a temporary loan. Last year, you approved the. 
temporary loan policy that'll continue to be in effect. Now we're just actually approving the, the um, loan. Yeah. All right. Chair, let's set the motion to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item is our addition is to adopt a resolution approving the airport rescue grant. Uh, was later in the year, correct? Uh, towards November, there it was received, and, and uh, just looking for formal approval uh, before the end of the year. I'll gladly move on that. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Savick. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Any discussion? We've nearly completely reconstructed the entire area. That should be good for many years. Top to bottom, top to back. Yeah. That's big job. And I don't know, you know, I don't know if the board members all understand it. There, there are only four full service airports in all of the state of Minnesota. Only one of them: Rochester, MSP, Duluth, International. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you know, without without these improvements, we wouldn't have been able to get it. It's worth it. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. The next up is human resource. And Jenna, hello. Good morning. Yes, so I have a light list today, only one. <laughs> Um, just looking for um, approval for employment separation of our part-time E911 dispatch correction officer, Michaela Bellinger, uh, and that was effective on December 22nd of this year. Thank you. Accept a motion to approve the separation. I'll vote, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Stoy. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Any discussion on the separation? And that's what this is, a, 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 that'll be out of the pool as? as Correct, so we have that running roster. Um, we're currently working on uh, filling uh, our part-time roster with some female correction officers just to make sure that we have um, ample staffing to be able to facilitate those needs, so. Okay. Uh, anybody have anything? Uh, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next item is to approve Minnesota lawful offsite gambling application. <coughs> and this is on behalf of we like Bass Championship on behalf of Green Lake Sport Fishing Club for their annual uh, raffle on fe February 26, 2022. Off the grid and out on the ice. That's right. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Commissioner Pavlik. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. cold weather, we should have ice. Yeah. So. Any any uh, discussion? Uh, hearing none, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. The next up is sheriff's business. Somebody we can pick on. Well, I don't know what you want to pick on. <laughs> I'm just here to uh, ask the board to renew Willie's uh, contract for the emergency management coordinator position. Uh, no changes from the last year, same amount, just change the dates on the contracts. Sure. sure. Make a motion to pass to accept that contract. Mr. Christian Lee? I'll second. Any discussion? 
school he's done a great job. I mean, he worked hard, and I got to give him credit. <laughs> That's great. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion to. Yeah, we just asked for your signature, too. Tell them we expect them to end this virus. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, we're dealing with it right now, so I think we've heard rumors of another one that was booked in yesterday that was positive too, so I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up is Public Health and Human Services business. We have a voids, donation, and some contract renewals. Kathy? Yep. Um, first, first off, we have three uh, warrants to void. Chairman, take my motion. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Pavlik. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Then the next item is to acknowledge the donation to Human Services from the Voyager Riders Motorcycle Club for $1,500 worth of toys that they brought us right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to get those out to families before Christmas and made a lot of a lot of parents and I'm sure children really happy too. The parents were very grateful and, and happy to be able to um, supplement the things they could buy for their children with these gifts. So and a thank you has been sent to them from us. Yes, thank you. Very generous. Then the next item is uh, I need a motion on that. Right I'll, I'll move on that, Mr. Chair. We're, we have to approve the donation. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you, Captain. Sorry, when I have a long list like this, I usually, I'm trying to rush it, I guess. <laughs> um, the next item is request approval for the renewal of the MFIT biennial service plan. Um, this is just done every two years and nothing really changes changes with it. It's a requirement um, from the state, so. All right. Accept the motion to approve the MFIT. I'll move on that, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. All set. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Then the next one is to request approval of the 2022 Children's Mental Health screening grant contract between DHS and Kitchen County. This is a state contract that they give us um, and directs us how to use the money um, from the grant. And nothing has changed with that either. I'll move about that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Pebble. Thank you, Commissioner Stoy. Any discussion? Here now, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Number five through 12 are all purchase of service. Uh, sorry, not, <clears throat> yes. Number five through 12 are purchase of service agreements um, for AOA, ODC, Northland Counseling Center, and Northland Recovery Pineview. Um, none of those have changed. Um, they're all just the annual contract renewals. I noticed 
on the um, agenda that we were sent out that the last two both said North Recovery Pineview Center CD assessments, but that should be number 11 and number 12 is for the residential treatment at Northland Recovery Pineview Center. Do we know we'll, we'll any of those? Thank you. Do you have any questions? I'll move on that, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. I'll second to Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Bedwick. Any discussion? Northland North especially is in the process you're not aware of the construction here, so Good. very much needed. Absolutely. Anybody have anything else? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Up is Auditor Treasurer to designate the 2022 polling places. I'll speed through this here. Uh, the polling places are the Kutcher County Board of Commissioners State of Minnesota hereby establish the polling place of the, of the following county precincts Rainier Community Building, Kutcher Pool, One, Rainier East. Rainier West, Evangelical Covenant Church, City of International Falls East, Cabo of Malloy Union Hall, Richmond County Hall 2, City of International Falls Center, St. Paul, St. Thomas Aquinas Hall. Oh, there he is. Sorry about that. You guys go fast at times. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can take over anytime, Tom. I was just going through the list of uh, yeah. polling places. Standard once a year, whether there's an election or not, we have to designate our polling places. They're the same as they were last year. Okay. So uh, kind of a, a, a formal deal. That's important. It's on our calendar every December. So. Excellent. Yeah, and they're, they're listed there. So. Okay. I was just at the City of International Falls West, is on your River Community College, Cushing, Cushing Pole 5, and Nail Bell Precincts, Central Northwest, South East, Southwest, North from Nisman West, Big Falls, Inner Creek, Little Fork, Jameson, Meadowbrook, Scarlet, North from and Nisman. So at least I got to read it anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could have done that too. But yeah, they're, uh, they're the same. The last several are the mail ballots, of course. So, uh, um, and the polling places are the same. Uh, just an aside, this is a redistricting year, so we're working on that stuff, and it'll be kept apprised as we go. We're the last domino to fall there, the county. So, anyway. Questions, sir? If I could, Mr. I'm always amazed at how things have changed, because uh, at one point, uh, we, we had the remote hallway halls out in the public districts and they didn't have, you know, wash and laboratories, especially in the fall, get cold. And so uh, we had homeowners who stood up to the plate and became the bowling places, especially out in, you know, I, I you know, thinking of uh, people out there in rural little fork and uh, but then finally the state said no, we can't do that anymore and we had to come up with something. Just to show you how people used to pitch in to make things work here for the county. Absolutely. Yeah, we have excellent judges and people that work on it that are really good. Yeah. Bob Peterson used to say they had a deputy down in North Home, Wayne, and uh, they, he would pick up the some of the ballots and equipment and stuff and run it up here, uh, you know, kind of the last thing. So, yeah. So it'll be an interesting year again, I'm sure, with a little less. Uh, yeah, I, I know that um, that is one of the few points I get on polling all the time. It's a lot of people like the mail in, but on the whole, that's one, one thing I hear is why I wish it would be back. There is a there is something that we're looking at that we can get some money on. I don't know that we'll do it. I'd like to discuss it with you and Wade particularly. And it's drop boxes. 
and drop boxes have to be monitored or in a secure pit place like a city office building or they have to be on tape 24 7 um, like the one out here and then that tape has to be stored um, but I you know I'm but I, I, I would like to get some input from you two guys to know if there's a place where people are more secure putting their envelope in the drop box you know, I mean, U.S. Mail, I think, is wonderful and great, but it might be an alternative to consider. So, uh, and I think we could do that as a non-budgetary item, but I don't know if, if that's good. It's just food for thought for now. And it wouldn't take too long to, to uh, put together. So, I'm thinking of the that's bigger... That's America. Yeah, pretty well Although, as time goes on, I think that the number of people you know, pushing for... Mr. Chair. But there was the thing that, you know, in the small towns, uh, and it was a lot of times it was the elderly ladies that come in and would man that, and they'd sit there for 12 hours or whatever. And it got to be quite an event for them. They'd all bring in. Yeah, yeah, potluck. Right? <laughs> you know, like, so yeah, social they, events. Yeah. That's what they were Area. Yeah, I don't want to say that still because I'm getting to be that age as well. But yeah, it's still the same people, and there are a lot of young people stepping up too. We are we're lucky; we have a nice waiting list for our to be election yeah. judges. So. Yeah, I I know the biggest problem was when the polling closed and they were tabulated that they had to come up here and kind of, and that was the biggest thing for some of those people. Was the, you know, when you have an hour and a half drive and depending upon the weather and you have to do it. Right, yeah, and if something, uh, you know, if there's a number off or something, which can happen, you know, you got to sit there and plow through and get her done, so. And um, oddly enough, the age group I heard more from was the kids that said, gee, we can't even go and cast the vote anymore, we have to mail it in. You know, someone have never, ever thought of voting. Sure, yeah, it is, yeah, it's different. A lot of things are, no. Uh, so many of them, they used to show up with Weapons. <laughs> <laughs> How utilized was that drop box last year, Tom, um, with the election? Uh, a daily, daily as we got towards the election, it was utilized. Uh, I would come by on the weekends and, you know, take them out of there. It, it, there's a camera there. I take them out and put them in the in the uh, secure area of our office in the vault. But that drop box was utilized. I would say, Kevin, kind of like it's utilized for our taxes as well. Yep. You know, people seem to prefer to come to the window, but we still check it every day, and we get one or two tax payments in per day. So okay. it's a nice option for those folks who are, you know, want to get here on the weekend. So yeah. Yeah. So it's used. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we kind of did that because of COVID. Yeah. You know, to yep. the point where the doors were closed and such. But, yep. Yeah. I chair will accept a motion to designate polling places. I'll move on that, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Havlick. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks folks. Thank Sorry you. for my lateness here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is information system business. And to approve, or excuse me, to approve enrollment in the Crown Street Secure Network Service. And Jackie. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So, this Crown Street um, service that I'm looking to enroll in was something that was budgeted for in for the 2022 budget. It's a cost of almost $17,000, but the state of Minnesota had started a pilot program and had about six counties enrolled at the time that we were doing budget planning, uh, but not willing to take on more. I've been meeting with them and following what they're doing. They are finally ready to start rolling in more and more counties, um, and it will be a significant cost savings for the county, plus provide additional security oversight because they have people watching their um, his portal constantly in their security operations center. So what I'm asking for today is approval from the board to enter into the CrowdStrike service to the state of Minnesota and also to authorize me to sign the liability release waiver to get that process started. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Jackie. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. I will second. Thank you, Commissioner Sway. Any discussion? Jack, I just want to, is this a per user fee that it looks like for? It's per a per device. So the, the state of Minnesota is charging $12 per device for a year in uh, 2022, and it will go up to $14 a device in 2023. But to give you a feel for cost, um, not going to the state of Minnesota and using their, their funding source that they have, it was going to be about $7 a month per device. So we're looking at a little more than double the price for an annual fee as compared to $7 per device per month. So um, that's a huge savings. <laughs> okay. Any other question? Name sounds intimidating. Oh, that's true. Thanks. Now we've got to keep those devices secure. Yeah. Uh, if there's something else, uh, other comments, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Hi, Matt. Hi. Oh, somebody we can pick on. <laughs> The Planning and Zoning Commission met on Thursday, December 9th, uh, 2021 to hold a public hearing on the combined parcel rezoning and conditional use permit application submitted by David and Kathy Howdall who are here today. The parcel is located on Rainy Lake along County Road 138, which is the Gold Shores Road. The applicant indicates they would like to convert the basement portion of their existing residential dwelling into, into a short-term vacation rental property. Uh, basically less than a monthly term. Uh, the basement has a separate entrance and consists of one bedroom, one bathroom, a kitchenette, and living room. As per the 1975 Cushing County Ordinance, Zoning Ordinance, approval of a conditional use permit is required for conducting a recreation service oriented business such as the proposed use. Current county policy is if rental is on a monthly or longer term term, then there is no zoning or conditional use requirement. This would be something less. After the owners provided information and answered questions, uh, the Planning Commission or Planning and Zoning Commission unanim unanimously uh, made the recommendation to approve the rezoning and conditional use permit application as submitted. Uh, and I've included the staff report and Planning Zoning Commission uh, meeting summary for their, you know, for your review. And uh, if uh, if the Howdells would like to say something, I certainly will turn the floor over to them. Or if you have questions for them. Thank you, Matt. We need to press this button. I, if it's green, you're good. Okay. So we did receive our license from the Minnesota Department of Health yesterday in the mail, and so everything's been approved. Yes. Anytime someone moves in there, they're never going to leave. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, so if we need a motion, I'm willing to do that. Grant it. I'll second that. Commissioner Fabric. Commissioner Murray. And we'll note too that their, their commission uh, appreciated the huddles uh, going through the process of doing it the right way. So we yeah. do appreciate that. Um, any other discussion? Hearing that, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion here. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And hanging Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My next item of business is the American Rescue Plan business. And there's a few items, and maybe administration director Zimmerman could kind of go through them. I know you're right. Yes, I sure will. So, back in September, we the the county board made a motion to approve the uh, broadband last mile grant program. 
Um, I would, I'm asking the board to rescind that motion. That uh, motion wasn't very well written by myself. Um, we had originally looked at the KEDA office. They were the, uh, had a grant uh, application and uh, guidelines. We had anticipated using about 16,000. Um, since then, uh, the folks that needed to get connected and received um, the grant and I, I believe what it was is they were eligible to receive up to fifteen hundred dollars, and uh, the um, Paul Bunyard would pay to get the service up to their house a quarter of a mile. But some of those driveways were much longer than that, and so in order to assist those people getting um, hooked up, the grant was. Um, the grant fund was created. Um, there were uh, a few people that hooked up. The total cost was only $6,831. Rather than having the KEDA office be a sub-recipient and going through that process, the consultant recommended that um, the county just pay that um, out of the American Rescue Funds directly and not involve the sub-recipient. So I'm asking you to rescind the board motion and approve the use of American Rescue Plans for the payment of Paul Bunyan in, in the amount of $6,831. And then we have to keep track of what expenditure category it is and for our reporting back to, um, for our reporting requirements. And the, our committee did re uh, recommend this, using our funds for this. And the consultant uh, considered it as eligible. Thank you. So this, this rescind motion will include the... New motion. Yep. New motion. Okay. Yep. Thank you. The chair will accept the motion to rescind oh. that word motion <laughs> and amend it. I'll make that motion to rescind. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll second, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Any discussion? Yes, you know, it's in the best interest of our rural people. That's why we support them and have them. I can understand putting up here. Well, yeah, it really, for me, uh, really, really got the, the lines to the homes where, where it may not have, if we, we wouldn't have done this here. So, you know, it was really a really a good uh, good program and you know there was a timeline on it and a, and a, and a co-pay as well so um, and, and Jack did a lot of work actually getting, getting all that stuff off the ground and did a lot of commitment from a lot of other folks so um, and it was successful I think every 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 little one is a success so uh, <coughs> anyway is there, is there any other discussion uh, hearing none I'll call the question all those in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 opposed and motion carries thank you The next request from the American Rescue Plan Committee is to approve a use of American Rescue Plan funds estimated at about $70,000 a year, and that is um, for uh, one additional correction officer, E911 um, shift, adding that shift for 22 years, 2022, 23, and 24. Um, this was deemed as a qualifying and eligible expenditure by our consultant and the committee reviewed and also recommended um, because it's going to help to address the courtroom backlog and adherence to COVID protocols um, and then there's the specific category um, under uh, payroll costs for public health safety and other public se sector responding to COVID-19. So. Um, the budget that the board approved uh, just earlier today included actually two uh, positions for um, general revenue for the sheriffs. Um, so again, that will be an adjustment to the budget later on in the year because one of those positions is going to be funded with American Rescue Plan funds. Um, both of those uh, requests to fill those positions will come to board um, before um, we, we begin filling those positions. I do. I'll say. Thank you, Commissioner Stoy. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Any discussion? Mr. Yes, Chair. Yes, After 2024, will the county be on their own without getting money from American Rescue Plan? You know, this position is only um, 
been approved through 2024. Um, and so there's going to have to be some conversation with the sheriff and with the under um, and with the jail administrator of exactly what this position is going to look like. Um, if it's going to be deemed a temporary position through 2024, which is going to be my recommendation. Um, but we're not sure exactly what that's going to look like yet. You kind of play it by ear. Well, it's going to have to come through the board for approval. Yep. When that gets figured out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any further? Yes. So I mean, to Jenny, to your point, it would have to come back to the board at that time if the board to extend or. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because there would no, there wouldn't be any funding for it after 2024. Yeah. Unless, of course, we get some new funding. Right. We don't know. Maybe we'll get another. <clears throat> it just remains, you know, it just remains concerned because, you know, again, we're, our population is declining and yet we're hiring more people in government. And, and, you know, so there's less people to pay the bills unless you, of course, having said that, I guess we've got a lot of people up in our area who come from outside and aren't, aren't residents here, but they, they do spend money here on taxes. I, th I think we, could, you know, we just got to be. Future boards have to be careful here. <laughs> There's less people paying bills, but th this this is great. I mean, it's going to we'll get a look at it again. Certainly be helpful. Uh, any other discussion? For the first and a second. If there's nothing else, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And motion carries. Thank you. Next. Uh, yes, so the next um, request on the agenda is to approve the allocation of American Rescue Plan funds um, in the amount of $788,000 for a Midco um, uh, fiber project uh, phases one, two, and three. It's a broadband project under um, using American rescue plans. Meetings uh, have been taking place over the last several months with area internet services providers. And uh, we've asked the internet service providers to identify potential projects that um, they would consider um, to improve broadband service to unserved or underserved areas. Uh, Midco has come up to the uh, plate and identified a project uh, in which they would contribute 47% of the cost of the project and the county would contribute 53% of the project um, and use American Rescue Funds for that project. And that um, is an eligible expenditure. Uh, 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 as a use of funds, and the consultant um, did review the project and uh, deemed that it was eligible. Um, Jackie, I would like you to maybe add a little bit to that, um, noting that we are working with other providers as well to try to get some projects out to those other areas that are un underserved or unserved. Sure, I also have Jim Yant as our uh, KTI chairperson is on the call and he's driving so hopefully he has oh he's not driving unless he's got a ceiling fan in his home. <laughs> no my departure was delayed. No ceiling fan in my van. Um, yeah so this is a, a really great topic. This is one of uh, four or more priority areas that KTI identified for broadband expansion in our early years. Um, and uh, Paul Binding ended up partnering and taking on um, you know, most of the other areas, at least parts of them. Um, this area was not, uh, they weren't interested in addressing this area at that time. We've been in communication with the common communication the entire time. And um, we helped play a role of establishing a relationship between them and North Star Electric for access to their poles to uh, do the County Road 103 just across uh, Jackfish Bay. And that project is underway as we speak. And that uh, collaboration that was set up between those two companies um, is what made this next uh, phase possible, extending basically all the way uh, east to Bell Island um, in three stages that are all interconnected to each other. They're all related. The first and second stage are required for the third stage. The third stage addresses uh, more addresses than the others. Um, and it's, a, it's just a really good project. Um, I, I can't speak to the relative allocation of funds and who pays what and all that, but um, you know, we put a lot of work into getting this set up and it seems like 
a really good use and certainly an area where there uh, most will have very poor internet and uh, not no other prospects in the pipeline for um, good coverage for them. Happy to answer any questions you might have as well. In fact, you might want to elaborate. Thank you, Jim. Any questions? Yeah, I, I got a question that's now, as far as the details on it, is this going to bring it right like to their homes, to the general area, or what's the end product of this? Like My understanding is we get connections, connections all the way to people's individual homes oh, okay. um, at whatever normal, um, you know, for just normal mid field customers like everywhere else in the rest of our county. Okay. So they're not going to be a fiber. Fiber for a lot of it. I don't know that it's fiber all the way to the home, but the, all the uh, back haul connections are fiber. It's that right, Jackie? Correct. Is there any long, home, is there a long distance to any of the homes, or is it all kind of reasonable distances that they've got to haul them? I have not heard of any issues um, like we had with Paul Bunyan uh, with the very long yeah. driveway issue, and I don't see why that would be the case because they're using the infrastructure that North Star Electric has. Well, yeah. and obviously, they have their uh, power lines going to all the homes. Just Part of the cost there. of this is uh, modifying the uh, power poles. They might have to replace some. We certainly have to relocate the power lines on some of them to accommodate the uh, the data lines, which you know, there's rules and requirements on spacing between those items and how far the the voltage uh, cabling has to be off the ground, so those are the relevant costs, but I don't see any issue, I'm not aware of any issue um, with uh, at difficult accessing any long driveways or anything like that in this case. Uh, Carol and I are the very first ones on 103, so we, you know, we, we got to know those people. Uh, but it, this is an extraordinary opportunity because what it does, it brings that internet in to be, there are a lot of people here who can't stay here in the summer when they like to, they own property, but they have to go back because they don't have what they need to be able to, to work. And this is gonna allow them to stay here and other people to come here. It's, it's, I, mean, I think it's just a great, great opportunity. And for the business that's out there, well, it could be a lot of different stuff. It's gonna be a big benefit to them or the, because of the more or less demand by their customers, their guests. Uh, they have these in the internet, they have a pad up now. Yeah. It's just kind of ironic that it's, uh, um, it's American Rescue Grant. It's, uh, it has to do with COVID. It uh, really has nothing to do with it. But that's, I guess, you take the money where you can get it, huh? <laughs> that's government other yeah. funds. So. This will help the county. Of course, Sorry. it will very well have kind of something yep. it really needs and it's uh, we're lucky that we're able to use this funding for it. <laughs> Any other comments? Or no, sorry. thank you for all the work you guys. Appreciate it. You're welcome. The chair will accept a motion to do the allocation. Oh, Thank you, Commissioner Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Hedwig. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Thank you to the, all of the all the many people involved. Uh, so many to mention, and, and the collaborations and the relationships uh, definitely uh, are clicking in all cylinders. So I certainly appreciate all the efforts. Uh, anybody have any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And motion carries. Thank you. I don't think anyone ever accused us of clicking our own cell phone. Well, yeah. Once a it's just an odd number, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, next up is to approve a technology allegation. Yes, that's, I believe, our fourth, fourth request for American Rescue Plan funds. Uh, the committee met and there was a request uh, to purchase some technology in the jail um, to aid in the response to of court backlog and health care for inmates um, and vaccination support services. Um, right now they're doing Zoom meetings for, jail, for the uh, inmates and they are also doing Zoom meetings for healthcare appointments. Um, this was, uh, so there's requesting 
two laptops for court appearances, and uh, it, I think a tablet and a printer for COVID-19 testing um, that they've recently implemented. And this, the committee reviewed it, uh, and so did the consultant, and it was eligible um, based under the expenditure category prevention in congregate settings, um, helping to prevent COVID, and then also aiding in the court backlog. So it kind of hits a couple different um, eligibility requirements. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, we'll accept the motion to make that motion approve that allocation. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Thank you, Commissioner Scoy. Any discussion? Hearing now, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Chair, the very last uh, request for the use of American Rescue Plan funds is um, we've uh, incurred some, still incurred some expenditures and continue to incur expenditures for um, protective um, um, PPE equipment, um, dense worksite prevention and evaluation, um, and data analysis. So one of the things that um, we used CARES Act funds to help um, with COVID-related costs were for uh, technology, and that was for hotspots for those that were working at home, and for um, our WebEx meeting licenses, and for some cell phones for those that were working um, from home in the assessor's office. Those American Rest or those CARES Act funds ran out in November. Um, we did request FEMA to um, reimburse the county for those costs, but they deemed that those were not eligible expenditures. But the American Rescue Plan funds are eligible for that. So we're going to pick up those costs from November 3rd through 2024 and continue to charge those types of things to the um, American Rescue Plan Fund. So I'm kind of looking for a, a basically a blanket um, authorization to continue to um, use American Rescue Plan funds for PPE, technology, things that are absolutely related to COVID. Um, and those would be reviewed um, by the uh, committee um, and again brought to board for the specific dollar amount because transfers will be made for that. So. Um, that's the request that I'm making is to uh, approve those uh, funds through the period of March 3rd through December 31st, 2024. So Jenny? Oh. Yes. This is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Um, we had one more item on our list that didn't make it onto the agenda. It was approval of a burial. Oh, we'll look, do that as an addition. I'm sorry about that. Yes, we certainly can. Which one are you doing the burial? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do the burial. Okay. okay. I'll second that, Mr. Chair. Okay, the, uh, the agenda, as Swain, I look at the agenda, we're okay with that addition. It was in the packet. I did notice that. I apologize for that. Uh, it was not on the agenda. I'm sorry, can I get the first and the second to get on this, please? Uh, I got Pavlik and 80. Thank you, Kathy, for catching that. Yep. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Thanks for catching that. Thank you. Uh, so the, the G5, the approval of the air, that's just an extension of the continuation of all that we're going to be having to do in the next three years related to. Yeah, just those incidental for PPE and, and for pretty specific costs directly related to COVID. Okay. Thank you. The chair will accept the motion to approve. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Scoy. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Any discussion? Hearing no, 
want to call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Then motion carries. The next item is public comment. Is there anybody uh, in person or virtually? Yes. I heard a comment out in the community that the county board is considering uh, upgrading the former Army Reserve building and turning it into a uh, office for the forestry and the um, for the forestry department and the highway department, and then this building being demolished or whatever in preparation for upgrades to law enforcement. Is there any truth to that? There, there's ongoing facility discussions. Um, I know we're on a facilities committee here. I don't I don't recall hearing uh, that part of the conversation, so I don't, I don't think the armory part is completely true, but you know the discussions are ongoing. That is an eligible piece of property there. It was actually a, a mentioned initially with, uh, for the highway department, and we have some issues with the highway department building, the administration building, uh, the annex uh, next door here. Um, so that's kind of the first step of the, of the whole puzzle. And then with the jail, uh, uh, you know, we have some building you know, facility you know, upgrades to do there. So that's part of the discussion as well. But the first piece of the puzzle uh, is the administration building for the highway department. So uh, maybe Jen could explain it a, a little bit further. If sure. So what the highway has done is um, they have the board approved entering into a purchase agreement and um, they're purchasing some property um, for a future administration building. Um, and that property is located kind of right across from the uh, sewage ponds in South Falls. Is that right? Yep. It's a 40 acre parcel, yep. I believe. Um, we're looking at doing um, potentially three phases, 2023 being phase one of um, uh, creating an admi moving administration to um, that location. Phase two would be 10 years from now as proposed, uh, potentially moving the um, maintenance over there, and then finally the complete, uh, uh, all of the garage, the highway garage. So there's a lot of things in the works, but nothing is firmed up. No, the only thing that's been firmed up is the purchase of the property at this point. So what we did is the facility committee met and we had a study done and um, that building is not ADA compliant um, and it would cost about $1.2 million to um, make that building ADA compliant. Um, it was not, uh, the committee deemed that it was not uh, economically feasible to do that. Um, being that the cost of building a new building is, is considerably less than that, if not sure. a, a third of the cost. Um, and so eventually that building probably will be demolished, um, but that's kind of depends on really where the jail, you know, that goes. And so there's a lot of things that are in the works, but nothing that has been decided yet besides the purchase of that property. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment in person or online? Mark, we can't hear you. Yeah. Oh. You got to get a little closer. Oh, oh no. No. Oh, my God. We can hear you, but just barely. Oh, no. I guess I don't know what better. the phone is. Better. It's better. Okay. I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, there's two Coffee with the Best events coming up this month in January. Uh, the first one's going to be January 5th. It's with the uh, North Home VFW, and they're going to host it at the Black Duck Cafe 71. Uh, that's the travel test, right? They want to go there. Anyways, it's going to be from 9 to 11 on January 5th. That's the North Home VFW Cafe 71 in Black Duck. And then on January 12th, which is the second Wednesday of the month, we're going to have the uh, Coffee with the Best at the International Falls BFW Cafe, uh, 8 to 12. So uh, please know it, and uh, we hope to see you guys there. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, any other public comment? Go Army. <laughs> 
Thank you. All right, if there's no other comments, uh, thank everybody for a great year and all everybody's hard work. Um, all, all the staff here and all, all the commissioners, I think it's been a great year for everyone and, and we've made a lot of progress moving forward and even despite uh, some of the some of the setbacks and, and difficulties of uh, 2021. So moving forward, 2022, uh, wish the best successes to everyone. So. I'm sorry, back at you. Before we go, this airport resolution, does that need to be? This is in our addition. Yes, we... I voted on that, I think. Oh, we covered it? Yes. Okay, so yeah. we're good there. Yeah, All right, well, before we adjourn, we always, it's always the tradition that we do something really nasty to the whole going. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yes. Did everyone sign it? No, no, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> there, there you go, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you. Thank you. We should give them a big hand for what we Well, thank you. I certainly appreciate it. And you know, I've learned a couple things here, and I'll just say them very briefly. Is uh, you can only you can only spend that dollar that you collect. You can only spend it once. And I remember hearing that from Commissioner Pavlik, so I'll give him some credit for that. And it's not. It doesn't matter what you look like. It's what you do. And I also got that from Commissioner Pavlik. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, you know, one of the things is respect the chair. And <laughs> we've uh, tried. Yeah. It's, well, no, and that's that means for me to respect the chair. So oh, okay. uh, hopefully, I've I've tried to do that. Uh, you know, not get too full of myself. Um, it has been a a scary challenge, but it's been a good one. So I, I certainly appreciate uh, everybody supporting and doing what they do. So thank you. Well, I think he deserves a big hand. So. Not that you other fellas didn't. Oh, no, 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 If there's nothing else, I will accept a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Stoy. All those in favor of adjourn, say aye. 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 Opposed? And we are adjourned.